Hello and welcome to White Men Can't Pod. It's a sports movie podcast. It's episode 46. I'm your host, Ryan, and I'm here with Mr. Wally Foley. Yeah, I'm here. And also Mr. Bill Cashin. I just realized we should have we should have done this movie on episode 42. Yeah. Yeah, what the I hell? Just now Why'd that? you do that? Oh, that, that was my fault. Way to go. Way to go, Wally. Yeah. All right, we're here to talk about the movie 42. Just so you know, the Jackie there's Robinson a movie, movie called 65, which is about the... And 61. 61, about 61. that's yes. what it was. About that's Roger Maris. About Roger yes. Maris, yep. And so, how he uh, ruined baseball. Oh, yeah. shut the fuck up. About what you, would you just say? He ruined baseball. Oh, my God. Get out of here with that shit. How did he ruin baseball? Because he broke pre Bruce number? Yeah. What does that have to do with anything? It doesn't. You're just mad at the Yankees. More or less. Okay. <laughs> How dare you be a Yankee, Maris. Uh, 42. Good movie. Yeah. Hadn't seen it before. I had never seen it before. Yeah. I uh, had watched it once uh, through the mail of Netflix. Netflix through the mail. Netflix you were through big the mail. Ne- you were a big Netflix through the mail guy. Again, there was like two years where I didn't have internet, so I had to do something. <laughs> I didn't have internet in the year 2013. <laughs> 20, yeah, I think it was 2013-14, yeah. Wow. A year without you should write a book. My a year my, with my year without the internet. <laughs> That's not a bad idea, actually. I bet you could get someone to pay you to do it again. Yeah. Oh, that Ooh. actually is not a bad idea. Yeah. How do you do that though? I'd have to get my own apartment. And now does it count that I have unlimited Wi Fi or unlimited uh data on my phone? Well, you, yeah, yeah you you couldn't have you'd have to switch down to a like a Nokia. A low, like a Yeah, you'd have to go well, down to a Nokia. At the time I only had two gigs of data a month. Oh well, you can do a good deal on two you can't watch videos. You can't you can no. Yeah, no, you yeah, can't know you, can no, do a good you deal can't do a good doing deal. Because I was still doing it like <laughs> I was on Wi Fi everywhere I went if you can't before getting this unlimited deal. Have the internet for a year. You can't have the internet in any way in capacity. any way. Yeah. Yeah, in any capacity. Oh, okay. You couldn't. No, I don't would, think you, you can't survive. To, you like, would have to write checks to pay yeah, the bills. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It would be like the guy who ate McDonald's every day. That kind of a documentary. Oh no, no. You it would have to be that. that. I could you do it for maybe. That. You could. You could. You'd have to call in now, all does your it, stuff. Does it count that my bills are all on auto pay? No, no, that would be all right. I That's think. internet. That's I'm not using the internet. It's I just that would be fine. But if you needed to get something paid, you'd have to like go and pay a bum to go to use the library to do it for you. <laughs> no, you're you're. It's all workarounds. No workarounds. No workarounds. Okay. If you're if it's gonna be interesting, you can't have the internet have anyway. Be, you would have to make actual phone calls. Yes, you have to call people for everything. What about directions? Mm-mm. I'd have to use a map. Map books. Fucking maps. You, That's part of it. Do you not remember using map books when you were a kid? No, we didn't. <laughs> you couldn't even print out map quests. You couldn't even do that. Exactly. I remember even printing if that, out map quests. Even if that was still a thing. being fantastic with map. Uh, yeah, I remember my like, parents going to AAA, having them make a book of maps to get us from, like, say, here to Myrtle Beach. Oh, man. So they could flip through as they went. I mean, yeah. yeah. As now, long as my I don't parents go were anywhere. always behind the time. Probably at this point, you could get some kind of a map quest. But I mean, as long as I don't go anywhere. Mm. But then, what about this? Looking up phone numbers in order to call these places phone that books. I need. Phone, phone books, my guy. Do they still make those? Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. They must. Little ones, maybe. I don't know. It's a good question. Oh that's, wait, wait! That's four one one. That's still a thing, that, isn't it? That's what makes probably it. yeah. Uh, hello, operator. Can you connect me to uh, AAA, please? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Get a travel agent if you're going to leave town. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, we there wasted people, a solid there three minutes are on this who idea. Don't use internet every day. <laughs> yeah. You'd have to write a book with like a unconnected, uh, yeah, an unconnected laptop or or a legal pad. Yeah. <laughs> All right, oh, this man. movie's 42. All right. That's a better podcast than this. Uh, maybe that that's a fight. I don't know how you post it on the internet, though. You need a producer. <laughs> well, you'd have to internet. pay you to post it for him. All right. Uh, in 1947, Jackie Robinson becomes the first African-American to play in the major leagues in the modern era when he was signed by the Brooklyn Dodgers and faces considerable racism through the process. He sure does. It's Ooh, 42. Yeah. 
So I wrote that this came out in 2023. I don't know why I wrote that. That's not true. That is not true. No. That's not true. Uh, This came out in 2013. Yep. Yeah. I just had a fat finger, it sounds like. Uh, 2013, pretty well acclaimed. What Mm. I thought was cool is Rachel Robinson, his wife, was involved in the filming. She wanted to make sure that it was authentic. Oh, actual Rachel Robinson. Nice. Yes, actual Rachel Robinson. Now, obviously, there are some things that are not true in this and, you know, to make it a movie, but she said that it was authentic to him and his story, and she actually loved the end result. So, okay. That's good. Uh, So, what kind of budget do you think they built into this? Time piece. This time, uh, piece, time yeah, period. Twenty thirteen. You piece? said twenty thirteen. The only big name at the time that you got is Harrison Ford. That's Harrison a big name Ford. though. Big big name. You've got, uh, but you got to remake like Ebbets Field and all this stuff. Mm. That's always a lot more money than you think to like make things old looking. So give me. Do you have to, who has to go first, or does it matter? Doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. Forty million. It's a good guess. It's a that's a good guess. I'll go um I'll go a little bit higher and say fifty. Interesting. Now there was a range. One website had a number, one gave a range. But the higher number was the one that seemed to be the most common. Thirty one to forty million. Does that mean I win? You win. All right, good. You, you got it on the head. I'm think. really good at these ones that don't count. I should have went it with turns out. Because I was thinking going like thirty five million. That would have made it that would have made it hard. That would have yeah. made it extremely You're difficult. Like, um, but forty million, you more you got it. You got yeah. the uh, what's it? They don't have the f- right figure, but estimated. You got it estimated on the nose. Okay. Okay. Good. Box office on a forty million dollar movie. I don't remember it doing well in the box. <sighs> it's interesting you say that. It must have done okay. People love this. Yeah, but I don't remember. Story. People, people love baseball movies. Going to it though. That's the thing. I don't remember people yeah, going. I didn't to it. see it in the theater. I've never seen it. I'd never seen it. Um, eh, eighty million. I'll go low. I'll say twenty. That's very low. Yeah, it's not correct. Oh, he's he's got it. He's got it. Damn. Ninety-seven and a half million. Ooh, wow. baby. So that was pretty good. The film earned twenty seven point three million for its opening weekend, the best ever debut for a baseball themed film. Wow. Yeah, I uh, I wasn't expecting it to be that low. I was expecting it somewhere in like the sixties, but I want to give it my a nice big range. So mm-hmm. you know, uh, I don't really have a good place to just enter in the movie. So you guys want to do eBay now, or you want to save it to the end? Do it now. You can do All it. Right. Let's do it now. Do it now. Oh, that means I gotta. That means you gotta pull it up, Wally. Oh, we My life I'm, without the internet. Yeah, I'm up rock eight to here. six on you. Of course. Drop it, it in. Drop it in, baby. So there it is. I have a second photo. I'll show you in a minute. But Two photos. This is the what you're bidding on right here. Okay. All right. <sighs> what do we got here? Let All me know right. when you're ready for the... Uh, Okay, yeah, nice. See this second. is a Chadwick Boseman framed, signed, 42 poster with Harrison Ford and others. In the description? Yeah. Yeah. Chadwick Boseman, frame signed 42 poster with Harrison Ford and others, comes with certificate of authenticity from R&M Real LLC, professionally framed and matted, poster size 15 by 19, overall size 22 by 26. Now, what I thought was odd is that's the whole thing. It says Chadwick Boseman with Harrison Ford and others doesn't give a list. Of who the others are. So I will send. I will add this other photo here, which I assume is supposed to say who signed it, but it's only okay. an assumption because it doesn't actually give any list anywhere. All right, let's mm. see. All right, Christopher Maloney, Lucas Black, Alan Tudyk, T.R. Knight, John C. McGinley. John C. McGinley. I don't even know who that is. John C. Uh, McGinley I'm is John, uh, John O'Reilly or John. C. John Riley. C. McGimley is the guy from Scrubs who's in this movie. Oh, oh yes, yes, yes. Okay. That's right. I think I just wrote him. I think I put him in my notes as TV doctor. James Pickens Jr., <laughs> Ryan Merriman, Max Gale, and Brett Cullen. Hmm. So I believe this is the crew that all signed it. But again. That makes sense, yeah. The one that there is a close-up on the eBay of Chadwick Boseman, which you can't read, but it's a CB, so I assume that's him. One, two, three, four, five. 
six, seven, eight, nine. I'm seeing maybe ten, maybe ten uh, signatures there. Well, this is pretty good. And there's eleven six, listed, seven, so. Eight, nine. So yeah, I'm probably just missing one. Yeah, all right. That's it. That's what you get. That's all we get. That's all you get. That's all I got. All right. I, Wally has to go first. Wally has to go first. That is true. So, uh, I like this. This is uh, this is going to be hefty, though. I'm going to say... I'm going to say $150. Uh, $200. <laughs> I was going to say you said it's going to be hefty, and then you said 150 Two hundred for. Okay, well, Ryan, you win. Damn it! But you're not remotely close. Seven hundred dollars. Ryan, you want to venture a second guess? Nine hundred ninety-nine dollars and ninety-nine cents. Ryan, you win again. God damn you're it! You're not remotely close. <laughs> what? Two thousand. Two thousand five hundred. Fucking asshole. <laughs> <laughs> All right. One thousand nine hundred and fifty dollars, or. Best offer. Oh, best offer. Okay. Uh, wow. But since you did like it, Wally, for 24 months with PayPal credit, you only have to pay eighty one twenty five. Okay. That's interesting. Uh, no, thank you. But yeah. Uh, also, 1935 for expedited shipping separately. This is coming from Arkansas. So where's our eBay order at for you two now? Uh, it's eight to seven. Wally's still up. Correct. Okay, closing that yeah. gap. All right, let's jump on in. All right, go ahead. Take us through. Okay. What? You seem disappointed or something. <laughs> I'm All just right. sad that I'm go not ahead. beating Wally in the EBA words. <laughs> what do you want from me? That is, I would feel sad too. Obviously, I'm beating him, but I would feel sad. So we open. Do with, we know for a fact that you're beating him in the I'm eBay? beating both of you. Yeah, he's winning. I'm dominating the eBay wars. He really is. I feel like you guys have probably each beat me at least once, but I'm winning for sure. Good grief. We have beat you once. You did. More than (laughs) once. (laughs) Hey, you said it. We have beat you once. You dickhead. Uh, We opened the movie with Harold Parrott, who was an actual sports writer. And he's serving as the narrator and also kind of setting the stage here. Uh, He basically says America just finished World War II. Everybody comes home. Oh, that's right. In America, we're still very racist. And then he says, in 1945, baseball's still segregated. What was his name? Harold? Harold Parrott. Who's a real guy, yes. right? He is a real he's guy. Based off a real guy. I like the way that they did this. Yeah. Because he's telling the story to the American public anyway. Yes. He's telling the story to us. Um, We then show Harrison Ford wearing his 1940s hat. He's playing the role of Branch Rickey, the real-life president and general manager of the Brooklyn Dodgers. And he's basically telling his two assistants, two two guys, that he's going to break the Keller barrier. Of course, they both object, say he can't do that. There's an unwritten rule, blah, 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 blah. He says, we're doing it. And then he basically says, we're going to do this for the money. There's a lot of black baseball fans, and their money is just as green as everybody else's. Yeah. Um, we then go to the Negro Leagues, and we see a young Jackie Robinson. He's causing havoc, stealing bases, and we watch him steal home, which he was known to do from time to time. Didn't he steal first, second, and then home? Or he, second, third, and then home in this the opening You can't here? steal first base, Wally. Yes, I know. I think he I think he was on second base when we started, and okay. he stole third and home. Okay. You Well, it, I asked a good question. It's not a steal if they drop the strike three, is it? That doesn't count as a steal. No, I don't think that I don't think as a steal. So. I think that just a oh, base. It's on a something. it's a drop ball. It, it counts as a strikeout. It somehow. does still count as a strikeout because you can have like four, there are guys who have had four strikeout innings. Yeah. Um, but he's on the bases. He's shown himself to be good at baseball. Uh, they're then on a team bus and they stop at a gas station before leaving town. The team owner says. Tells Jackie he can't use the bathroom base because he's, come on, you know you can't go in there. Mm. So he says, all right, take that pump out of there. We'll go get our 99 gallons of gas from somebody else. Mm. And he basically says, like, all right, fine, go. Uh, we go back to Branch and his pals talking over options. They're going through some people. 
They talk about Ray Campanella, but they say, no, he's too nice. We need someone who's not as passive. We'll eat him alive. Say, Satchel Page is too old. We need an up-and-comer. And they decide, at least the way that's shown here, basically Branch decides it's going to be Jackie Robinson. Mm-hmm. He's been in the military. He's from California, so he's played with white guys before. Yeah, because he played at UCLA. UCLA. Yep. Um, he's our guy. Uh, so we go back to the team bus, and we see that um, Branch's guys have gone to basically pick him up, and they bring him back to meet with Branch. And he basically lays out a plan to have him start in Montreal, which is their minor league team. And he says, if you earn it, we'll bring you up and we'll play in Brooklyn. And he kind of has a weird scene, though, where he basically gets mean, starts calling them names and saying, like, you're going to be able to do it. You're yeah, gonna be able can, to handle, handle, can you handle not being allowed in hotels? Are you going to be allowed them calling you all these bad names? Are you going to be able to turn your other cheek? Yeah, he's, like, trying to rile them up and, yeah. like, test them. See what he's going to do. he says, there. I need you to not fight back. You're going to be the bad guy in any confrontation. They're going to say, you started it. You're the issue. And he basically, Jackie says, so you want a player who's doesn't have the guts to fight back? And he says, no, no, no. I need a player who has the guts not to fight back. And then Jackie basically says, you give me a jersey, I'll give you the guts. Uh, he then calls his fiance Rachel, and he proposes over the phone, and they get married very quickly. Not true in real life. They were already at least engaged before all this went down. Mm. Okay. But, so they get married now before the season. But just getting to spring training proves difficult. Uh, they're at the airport waiting to get on a plane. And Rachel says, like, for the first time in her life, she saw, she's an actual segregated bathroom. Mm-hmm. She ignores it, uses it anyways. The clerk at the airport sees this and basically kicks him off their flight. Says, oh, we had to lose a couple passengers. Yeah. But then two white people get on in their in their place. Yes. They just, she just resold their tickets. Um so they have to take a bus instead, and they get picked up by Harold, our to this point narrator. And he basically says, I'm here to be your caretaker. Branch sent me. Uh, and he like, takes him, gets him in a car, and he takes him to a house and basically says, you can't stay with the rest of the team because we're in Florida, and there is nowhere for you to stay down here with the rest of the white folks. So they got him set up uh, in like a friendly place to stay. Um doesn't seem like Robinson likes Harold very much, and he certainly doesn't want to listen to him because he's trying to say, like, yeah. let me ask you some questions because you're going to hear questions at least. He doesn't like him in this movie. Yeah. yeah. Hear them from, like, a friendly voice instead of from the other reporters that are about to start asking you a lot of questions. And he just kind of ignores them and says, I'll answer questions, whatever. Uh, very early on, we see Jackie get moved from shortstop to second base. Uh, the manager basically says he doesn't have the arm to play shortstop. And then we also find out that the Montreal manager is very racist, calls him the N-word. Branch basically says, first of all, get teams in order. You're setting the example for the team. Don't be racist. And uh, <laughs> if you can't figure this out, I will find someone who can. If you could stop being racist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Please. Uh, so we start with exhibitions. Um Black fans are, of course, very excited to see this, and they're showing up to the games just like Branch hoped. Um, there's a young fan, I think Eddie maybe is his name, who was just in the crowd saying, like, I really hope he does well, but we end up seeing him throughout the movie. Oh, yeah, yeah. Turns out white people in Florida, though, I mean in general, but especially down south, are very racist. They don't like it. They're saying a lot of real not good things to him. Uh, this is, they're playing the Brooklyn Dodgers here. In this exhibition, mm-hmm. starting pitcher Higby won't give him anything to hit, walks him on four pitches. Uh, so then Jackie gets on base and laughs, basically, as he does it. Steals second base, tries to steal, steal third and gets caught in a good old-fashioned pickle, mm-hmm. which is a lot of fun when you're in Little League. Uh, but somehow it works, and he gets the third base from the pickle. And then he's in Higby's head so much that he balks, which, while this is a balk, there's a lot easier ways to go about having a balk than having him literally drop the ball out of his glove. <laughs> yeah. I feel like he balked before he dropped the ball. Right. Yeah. But he balks, and so they award Jackie home plate. And he basically manufactures a run just by messing with the pitcher's head. 
uh, later that night, he is literally run out of town by a racist who said, he's going to leave or we're going to make him. And they get legitimately afraid and they get him out of town. <laughs> Jackie thinks that yeah. uh, yes. he got up for because he was cut from the team. Yeah, he's <laughs> relieved to find out that it's just because people are racist. He he's thought he re- was being cut. He's relieved to hear people want to kill him. Yes. <laughs> yeah. wow, you got a weird sense of humor, man. <laughs> So he gets out of town, but he's good there. Um, we go to another game, and he goes to like steal home and kind of runs over a catcher, and a police officer kicks him out of the game. Oh yeah, yeah. this also seemed pretty racist to me. Yeah, I don't think usually police are allowed to do this. No, nope. But uh, yeah, cop sees him is like, we don't allow this down here. You're not welcome, and kicks him out of the game. And he's like talking to his wife, and he's like, I basically said, you want me to get, sir? I'll get. <laughs> oh, and then immediately, yeah, like some a white guy approaches him. Yeah, like, I need to tell you something. Yeah, and Jackie like hides his wife, and he basically says, "Hey, I just want to let you know there's a lot of people pulling for you. It's not just me. Yeah. We all hope you do well, and I want you to know that. So there are some white people that aren't terrible, but most are. Most of them are pretty terrible. I mean, still, yeah. Uh, Branch then calls him up. And says, hey, Jackie, uh, when AAA team leaves for Montreal, you're going to be with them. You're, you've made Montreal. He's relieved. And he asks Branch, hey, why are you doing this anyways? And Branch says, I want to win World Series. You can help me do that. And I'm going to bring up more guys next year. They'll help me do it. And we'll win the World Series, and it'll make me a lot of money. I'm doing this for the money. He's very honest to, to Jackie. Yeah. He's like, yeah, I'm doing this for money. Yes. Like, <laughs> yeah, but also he's. We'll, we'll ask him several more times about this movie. Why he's doing it? Yeah, but yeah, he says I'm doing this to make money. Uh, on his way out of town, when he gets on the train to head to Montreal, uh, he sees that same kid from the stadium again with some of his friends, toss him baseball. Uh, at his first game, there's a mixed reaction. Crowd is very super racist, but there's also a lot of black fans in the crowd to support him. Um. We also then, during the game, learn that Rachel is, in fact, Prager's. Mm. And in this game, I don't know if this is true to life or not, but he hits a home run. So he starts to show very quickly he's a good baseball player. Uh, We immediately jump nine months, and now Jackie is a dad. And he's in the hospital, and he gives like a little speech to the kid and basically says, my dad left me. I don't remember him. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to be here for you. Uh, we then finally get the emergence of uh, Christopher Maloney as Leo DeRocher. Great, great uh, pairing here. I loved it. Yeah, I loved uh, sleazy DeRocher. Yep, and Maloney playing that character is great. Yep. Branch calls him and says he's the Dodgers manager and says, "I need to know law your and order. feelings." Law and order, dude. Law and order. Okay, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I need to Which know your feelings that? on. Jackie Robinson and he's like asleep next to a woman and he's like I have no feelings at all it's like are you going to be able to do this and he's like if he can help us win I don't care I will play him can I please just go back to sleep Uh, he says I don't care that he's black and then but importantly here we see that he's in bed with a woman who is not his wife he's not married she is okay oh is that what it was yeah I'm pretty sure. Um, we learned that this year, let's, we're getting ready for the next year's spring training, and it's going to be in Panama, which he's doing to kind of, I don't know, make the team not be around just other white people, I guess. This is one of the ones that's not true. This is actually, they did have spring training abroad, but they just went to Cuba. They didn't go to Panama. Why they said Panama for the movie, I'm not sure. Just because we don't want to give Cuba credit for anything, maybe. <laughs> but... They're going abroad for spring training. We see several Dodgers players get it together and start signing an agreement that basically says Jackie is allowed to play on the team. They are not going to play on it. Um, most of them seem to be signing it. We see a guy that keep calling Stank, whose actually last name is Stanky. Stank. He refuses. He's like, ah, I can't help you right now. They go to Pee Wee Reese, and he basically says, I can't afford to sign this, so I'm going to have to sit this one out, guys. And he's the... 
real life like team captain. Yeah, because earlier in the movie they say, like he's like, I'm a shortstop. I'm like, what are you gonna take Pee Re- Pee Wee Reese's job when he come up? Yeah, and he's like, I don't, I'm not worried about taking anybody. I'm just trying to play. Yep. And he does say, in real life too, he was asked, "What if he takes your job?" And he basically says, "If he could take it from me, he's if he's a better man, he could take it." Which he does say at some point in this movie. He does right? say it now in the movie, and then also in real life. I don't know if it was you know the timing on it, but did famously say this in real life too. Uh, we learned that Jack, uh, Jackie's going to have to move to first base, though, and they basically say, listen, we already got a second baseman, but first base is wide open, so learn how to play. play. Learn how yep. to play. And he's like, I've never played first. And I'm like, well, figure it out. So we see him learning. He's struggling, but he is starting to pick it up. Which makes me think of, uh, Which, what was the movie we watched? Uh, the A's movie where uh, Scott Haddenberg's. Yeah, Billy Bean's like, oh, you're going to play oh, first, yeah. Hatterberg. And he's like, okay. Uh, Moneyball. Is, is it easy? And he goes, no, it's fucking hard as hell. <laughs> <laughs> now, like, is it really that much of a difference playing with a larger glove? Like, with the with the larger glove? Because they make a big deal out well, of it. Well, they that. show, when they show, like, the infielders, their gloves are tiny. They're barely above their fingers. Oh, that's true. So I think it's it's yeah. probably a big change then. Even now, it is different. It's a bigger, it's just, like, catcher's mitt kind of glove. I, yeah. Like, trying to actually feel the ball, I, I, is, I don't know, but as I understand it, is a lot different because it's bigger. You don't, like you said, you don't feel it as well. Right. That makes sense. All right. But even so, like, I guess at the time, yeah, because uh, those gloves that they usually wore were so small, but, like, even his just looked like a normal size glove nowadays. Right. You're like, oh, it's not that big. Yeah. Uh, we then, again, Brent Tricky uh, rakes, wakes Leo DeRocher up in the middle of the night and basically says, hey, here you got a fun rebellion on your hands. Uh, you're going to have to do something about that. Squash this. Uh, so he does. And this happened, not, I'm sure, in this exact way, but this happened in real life. There's a bunch of people doing it. And he loses his mind and stops it cold and basically says, he's playing. You're all going to play too or you can find somewhere else to go. And also... Just realize this is the first one. There's yeah. going to be more black players. And he basically says, work harder to be good at baseball or you're all going to lose your spots. <laughs> I like how he's like, if you spent more time actually trying to play better instead of writing petitions and doing bullshit, you might not lose your spot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Dix, who's one of the leaders in this thing here, Dixie objects to it and says like you can't do this to us and he is immediately shut down um we then go to the office and bragan one of the other players refuses to recant his position and ricky tells him like all right fine i'm gonna trade you then yeah he says like play for me while you're here but i will move if you can't you're handle gonna, this you're thing, gonna go it's on you and i'll move you uh so we go to new york um at the end of spring training here harold's again there to help him and he, again, is kind of rude to Harold, who's, like, picking him up and bringing him around to the hotel and stuff. And he basically says, like, you've been very good to me, and I do understand that. I just don't like having to rely on anybody else. Yeah. I don't like needing someone to help me. But they seem to kind of work things out, because Harold gives a speech, like, do you, do you notice that I sit with a typewriter on my knees? Yeah, I'm not allowed in the press box yeah. either. Like, You're not the only guy who is getting racism. You're not just doing it. this... Yeah. For you yeah. either. This is, you know, there's a lot more on the line here. They seem to be on good terms. Uh, then we get the commissioner calling Branch Rickey to say that he's going to suspend Leo DeRocher for his, on account of his extramarital affair. Being an adulterer. Uh, so he's going to be gone for the year. Now, in real life, Leo DeRocher was suspended for this year. It was not, although there was some sort of affair thing. He was suspended for his association with known gamblers. Oh. Basically, him and the New York Yankees manager hated each other. And so they like took turns like accusing one another of being like aligned with gamblers. And mm-hmm. and apparently Leo DeRocher is involved in some poker game where he won a bunch of money from like an actual baseball player at the time. Okay. So he was suspended, but he was suspended for ga- being associated association with known gamblers was what they the guy actually said. I see. 
Why they changed it here, no idea. That doesn't make any sense. I guess it's because it's harder to explain. I guess. Yeah. Uh, we then learned that Robinson will officially officially be added to the Dodgers to open the season. Uh, we go to the first game. The locker room itself was a mixed reception. Some players say hi and shake his hand. Others will barely look at him. He has to use just like a hat rack for his locker. Although the, the guy says, the guy I'll, says I'll like, get you one. I'll I get just you found one. out you're going to be here. I'm going to get this right. Right yeah. now. This, and he's like, no, that's fine. Like, whatever. Uh, when he takes the field, there's a lot of cheers, but also a lot of a lot of boo. a lot of jeering from the crowd. But it's clearly a huge deal. There's cameras everywhere. He's surrounded by like ten cameramen at first base. So this is clearly this is a big thing. Um, we get the, t- the TV doctor on the radio call. Okay, when we first see <laughs> when we first see. Uh, Dr. Cox. Dr. Cox from Scrubs playing this character. It's like, ah, oh, it's Vin Scully. No. It is not. It's Red Barber. It's Red Barber. Mm-hmm. And Red Barber is an interesting guy. Did you look him up? Not very deeply. Okay, I did. I just did. Um, he is very famous for several catchphrases. Yes, which he says a lot of um, weird things. Which he says a lot of them. Can of corn. Uh, the bases are FOB, full of Brooklyn's. Mm-hmm. Can of corn. He came up with that. Um, rhubarb. There's a rhubarb out there, which is any kind of altercation. Yep. Um, he, he like, sitting in the catbird seat. I feel like they got okay. all these things when you're winning. There. They did. Walking in the tall cotton when you're winning. Uh, slicker than a boiled okra. Uh, describing a ball that a fielder was unable, unable to get a grip on. Um, tighter than a new pair of shoes on a rainy day. We got that one. Yep, we did. Um. And then a few others. He also was very famous for being a gentleman. He was mm-hmm. a southern gentleman. So instead of saying old, he would call people mister. Okay. Instead of saying uh, fat, he would say big fella. Sure. Stuff like that. Uh, <laughs> he's a big fella. He's a big fella. <laughs> uh, or instead of calling the player old, he would say old number 13 coming into pitch. Okay. Um, also... You're gonna you're gonna hate this. I'm sure. He is credited for coming up with back, 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 back. That is him. Yep. Copy back, back, Chris back. Chris Berman well, copied I, I don't this know. guy. I think it what makes you just one? like Berman even less. Berman copied the back, oh, back, back. Oh doctor. He, hear, he hears us talking about him. There he is. Apparently he said oh, oh, oh doctor on the game saving catch in the ninety four. In the 47 World Series by Al Gianfrido. Oh, Doctor. Oh, Doctor. Which he, he also, says, but like he he says did, in the movie. Yeah, which he does. Like It says in the trivia that he never really ever said back, back, back or oh, Doctor. Like in general, it just happened to be like those are the f- like those well are the calls known. that people remember. Yeah. He brought Vin Scully into Dodgers broadcasting oh, in, ni- okay. in 1950 and they broadcasted together. Interesting. Somewhat. And Vince Scully was also a redhead. That's what confused me at first. He's like, oh, yeah. it's the old it's the redhead old here. I was <laughs> like, oh, it's got to be Vince Scully. I do like his uh, his see here accent that he went with for this, which I'm guessing is fairly true to life. Probably. It Where sounded super fake coming it out did. of him, but yeah. still a fun character. I enjoyed and this character. One of the things in the movie is that he obviously wouldn't be there to call the away games, but that's in... Every sports movie, yeah, it's the same guy calling games. Whether it's true now, you get guys traveling, but back yeah. then you called your home games. Um, so yeah, we get Robinson coming up with his first at bat, and he beats out an infield single. The ump just looks him dead in the face and calls him out. He just has to walk away from it. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, Ricky finds a new manager. It's just some old guy who comes in and gives a weird speech about like, don't worry, guys, I'm not going to do anything. You're on your own. I will not coach. <laughs> this was really weird. Really weird. I almost wish they cut this out. Yes. This I guy also... plays no role, no role in yeah. Jackie Robinson's life, it well, seems like. Well, I like that he turns to Jackie and he's like, oh, are you Robinson? <laughs> are you Robinson? <laughs> Yes, coach. He doesn't get he. What is the story? He's like, oh, I told my wife I can't come back. I'll never wear a uniform I told again. Her I'll never wear yep. a uniform again. And then Han Solo says to him, oh, uh, just don't wear a uniform. And he's like, <laughs> yeah. all right, wear a suit. Wear, wear a suit. <laughs> all right, wear a suit like Connie Mack. All right, whatever you say. Yep. Very weird. 
And the guy doesn't really matter at all in the movie, other no. than this. He has this part. Yep. Like later, he's there when things are going on, but he doesn't. Yeah, he has yeah, no. Yeah, he, he exists. He doesn't like ever do anything. No. Uh, we then go up into the press box where one guy's being real racist about how black people are just faster. Yada yada yada. And Jackie hits a bomb home run, and one of the other guys looks at him and goes, "Oh, is that what that was? Is that why he hit that home run?" In the press box, yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's because they have a longer heel. Black bone. people have a longer heel bone, yeah, yeah. which makes them faster. Which makes oh, them faster. Okay. And he hits home run. He's like, "Oh, is that is that because of the heel bone?" <laughs> yeah, I love it. Was... Now, Ryan, you have said many times that you're a big fan of Alan Tudyk, generally, right? I this this was um. So this is your favorite all-time role for Alan Tudyk. No, it's not. Stop it. Um, He's great in everything, and he's always like a nice guy. (laughs) It's so weird to see him as a villain. It just feels weird. So the pirate, what's his name? Alan Tudyk. No, what's his, the pirate? Steve? Steve Steve the pirate. Steve the pirate. Arg. Is a racist asshole. Also, Fire Ben Chapman, the manager of the Philadelphia Phillies, and Hoofa Tufa. Does he make an entrance? Oh, oh my God. He walks out of the dugout and just stands basically in the batter's circle. Yeah. And just says every racist thing that he can. He must say the N word 50 times in a this lot. one we scene. Just, at, I was just thinking N-word, about, N-word, like, N-word. I, you know, obviously, most of these, I'm assuming all these actors that had to play these racists yeah. are not actually racist. It's got to feel really weird I to I feel like, like I would have to have a conversation with role. Chadwick Boseman and be like, Hey, so I'm about to say some real mean shit. I to don't you. know how to feel about that. I like, know that it's in the script, I, but I need I need you to tell me it's okay for I me feel to like, do this. Honestly, I feel like people would not accept the role. Like I, that's what I kept thinking about. Like if someone it's was like, real tough. "You can be in a movie, but you got to be racist," and I was like, "I don't think I can do it. it. I'll just not be in a movie." One of the other trivia things said that it would be uh, hard for me. Alan Tudyk and Chadwick Boseman anybody stayed separated during like filming, so there could actually be. Like animosity, like mm. coming through so on the screen. Be like, oh, this is a friend of mine type of thing. Exactly. Interesting. Wow. They deliberately avoided fraternizing while filming their scenes together to better convey the animosity between Robinson and Chapman, which is. Wow. And Alan Tudyk got into character by watching videos of street fighting before each take. Mm. That's weird. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, so, yeah, he's saying all this terrible stuff. And it starts to garner some sympathy from Jackie's teammates, though, because mm-hmm. they see just how ridiculous the whole thing is. Some of them, some of them seem to be, Dixie seems to be enjoying it, and says something along the lines of like, oh, can't take the heat. Yep. Uh, but one of his teammates does actually go over to Alan Tudyk. Yeah. And gets it's, his, uh, and the, it's Stank. Stank does Stank. later. Yeah. After, they, at his second at bat, he oh, does yeah, it again. Second at bat, yeah. And then he goes into the tunnel and just like, Loses, loses it, just like breaks down, crying and smashing bats. Branch Ricky has to come and like talk him back up, and say like he kind of yells at him, mm-hmm. but then also says like you're medicine, Jack. We all need you. Um, and this is one of the ones. This never actually happened. This breakdown in the tunnel. Mm-hmm. But this, he did get God yelled at good, by the good movie. Yeah, but so and this is one of the things where. Rachel, Jackie Robinson's wife, basically said, like, that never happened. But the director basically said, like, I wanted this scene to convey, like... How much pressure he's under. What was happening to him. And maybe it was never in public, but surely there were times where he was having a hard time with it behind closed doors. Yeah, Yeah, there had to have been. So that's what he wanted to convey here. Uh, So before his next at-bat, yeah, um, Stanky goes over his teammate and stands up for him and can... He goes and confronts uh, Chapman and basically yells at him and says, like, what are you doing here? You know that he can't react. You know that he can't fight back. Like, why don't you pick on someone who can fight back? Yeah. And Chapman's like, I'm not going to fight you, stank. They and were then, teammates in St. Louis or something, mm-hmm. right? And he, like, calls him names, and then Stanky just calls him, like, a redneck, basically. <laughs> at least I'm not a redneck piece of shit. Yeah. <laughs> redneck piece of shit. Uh, Jackie comes up. He gets a single. He then... Steals second, and the the uh, catcher throws the ball into center field, so he gets third base too. Stanky comes up behind him, or whoever's behind him, gets a hit, and he scores in the hit. And then Chapman just kind of like, all right, okay. Uh, so they <laughs> – this is really drives it home for Alan Tudyk's character, for Chapman. 
the press are like, hey, did you cost yourself a game doing all your shenanigans? And he's like, no, a single to left cost us the game. He's like, you didn't think that anything you're doing here was a problem? And he's like, oh, I'm real racist to Jewish players. I'm real racist to the <laughs> Italians. Yeah. It's just, and then it's it's over I, at the end of the game. Yeah. I help them. I help them. Uh, it's just part of the game, basically. It's like, oh, that's okay. your defense? Uh, we see Branch talking to his underlings, and he's basically like, yeah, this was, I'm great. I'm glad that Chapman did this. I'm like, what? He's like, he is, he's like, right now, you didn't even want him here, but you feel bad for him now. He says, like, he is making people feel sympathetic towards Jackie Robinson. This is actually a good thing for us. Again, playing into the, he just wants money. Right. Uh, we then get Bregan, who is the one who demanded a trade. He comes in and says, like, hey, if it's not too late, I would like to stay here. I, like, I think I can grow up. I, if the world's changing, I should be able to as well. So he doesn't. So instead, Higby gets traded. And he's going to Pittsburgh. <laughs> and he, like, loses uh, it that he has to move to Pittsburgh. I'm going to Pittsburgh. Like, and all for just speaking my mind. Because First Amendment, oh. say whatever you want. Yeah, that's still a thing. So he's going to Pittsburgh. We then get the Philadelphia, I assume, team president. Somebody calls, reach out to Branch and says, hey, so we're not ready for that in Philadelphia. So when you guys come down to play us, ye, you might as well just leave Robinson behind. Just leave him there. Just Branch is like, no, nah, we're not going to do that. He's like, you got to. This is Philadelphia. This is not New York. And he's like, listen. He's like, we won't take the field if you bring Robinson. He's like. All right. We'll take a you nine want a nothing nine win. to nothing shutout. <laughs> All right. We'll, we'll just, do it. We'll just take the win. Yep. So they get to Philadelphia and the hotel owner comes out and says, uh, you're not welcome here. And they're like, you mean Jackie's not? And he's like, no, none of you. None of you are welcome. None of you. Anymore. Oh, great. And the assistant tries to be like, hey, uh, we've been coming here for like a decade. It's like, well, not today. You're not welcome here. So then Dixie gets real mad and he basically says Jackie owes him an apology. Uh he's like, "Yeah, you are making this whole season a uh circus. I just want to play baseball." Robinson's like, "Hey, uh yeah, I also would like to just play baseball." <laughs> <laughs> and it like basically almost starts a fight. They all get broken up, but things are starting to come apart at the seams here. And then the little assistant dude kind of takes control. Yeah, we at least the, calms things down. Yeah, and then all we we cut to the next scene. That that was tells yeah. everybody to shut up. Yeah. Basically, uh, the Phillies owner calls up Chapman, the manager, and says, "You need to apologize. They're writing all these awful stories. You are making all of us look bad." And he's like, mm, "No," and he says, "He's more racist. He triples yeah. down on being racist." Yes, he he's like, "No, I'm not doing anything wrong." And the owner says, "You will apologize to him publicly, or you will not be the manager anymore." So they he sets it up so that they're going to take a picture together, and Jackie's like, we'll do it on the field. Do it out in the open. And then Jackie brings a bat and is like, here, we'll just hold opposite sides of the bat so you don't have to worry about touching me or something like that. Wow. And so there is a picture. I think this is a real thing. There's a Probably picture of the two of be, them yeah. holding the bat. That's crazy. Yep. Uh, in a game now in Pittsburgh, they have a German fellow named Ostermuller on the mound. And he straight up hits Jackie Robinson in the head with the pitch. It's in the dome. Boom. In the dome piece. And we find out we hate it. We hate the Germans more. We hate the Germans a lot at this point. <laughs> yeah. so they they want to kill this guy. Yeah, they actually. The Dodgers stand come up out. And team actually stand, defends him and starts a a rhubarb on the field. Starts a little rhubarb. Um. After the game, Pee Wee Reese comes into Branch Rickey's office and says, hey, we're playing a series against Cincinnati, and that's almost a home game for me, being from Kentucky. He says, I got a death threat, and I'm real concerned about you know, how we're going to do this trip here. And Branch kind of almost laughs at him, and he gets up and he pulls out just files from a cabinet. Files and files and files. He's like, files. yeah, here's the death threats that Jackie gets. And he's like, oh, my God, does he know? And he's like, yeah, of course he knows. <laughs> he Does gets he? these. You so got one letter. He knows. Calling. The FBI knows. They're looking into this for real. Yeah. Because they're concerned about Cincinnati as well. And he basically says, grow up with it. One letter grow calling up. you a carpetbagger really isn't yeah. my concern. He says, the world's changing. We got to deal with it. 
Uh, so on the field, Pee Wee Reese makes a big deal of it by going over and putting his arm around him, around Jackie, because he says, like, I want to, sh- I got family here. I want to show the crowd and my family who I am. I want to show them that you are my teammate and I'm, mm. and I'm good with that. Now, this did actually happen in real life where Pee Wee came over and made a show of putting his arm around him. Yep. Uh, but it was not this. It was, it was, um, like the first road trip that the team had okay. or possibly this is the following year in Boston. There's Interesting. mixed reports, but okay. Pee Wee Reese really did do this and like put his arm around him to show he's my teammate and we're good. Interesting. Um, after the game, Branda, who I recognized this guy all the whole thing too, and I couldn't figure out where from. He was on a Netflix he's show called super Midnight Gospel. Guy? No, he's like the the other guy that is like friendly towards him. Okay. And and we'll he, he was on a Netflix show called Midnight Gospel. Hmm. He plays a priest. Uh, it's a hmm. weird show, but it's good. Okay. But that's where I knew him from. I couldn't. I picked. Oh, I the tall guy. The tall guy. Yeah. Uh, he's in um the newsroom. He's also in. Oh shoot! There was another movie that I saw. Him Hamish in. Linklater. Yes, that's him. Yes. He after the game says. Uh, Jackie, come take a shower with me. <laughs> yeah, it was a pretty funny good. scene. Because Jackie, yeah, we learned, good. just waits for all the white players to shower, and then he does. And Brenda's like, why are you not showering? Yeah. Like, are you shy or something? And he's like, I just don't want to make anybody uncomfortable. So Brendan's like, well, why don't you come take a shower with me? <laughs> uh, I realize like that. That's not what I meant. I realize what I just said. And he basically, Jackie's like, stop, stop talking. <laughs> uh, but he does then go and join the team shower. Which mm-hmm. it seems some people don't love, but well, it seemed like only one guy just like walked yeah. out, and everybody else was just like, "All right, he's fucking showering." That guy's on his way to Pittsburgh. Yeah, exactly. The next game we stop at, Eno Slaughter, a famous ball player, spikes him at first base. Oh yeah. Ultimately, he's going to be okay, but he's gash. His whole leg's cut up. He does kind of get up, and he tells the team like, "This is too important. Just get me up." Just they want to be. They want to. Yeah, they want to be in the pee him when he's back up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this something like this did actually happen, and to this day it's controversial as to whether or not Slaughter spiked him on purpose or not. He has maintained forever he was like the way he was standing at first base. I didn't do it on purpose. He was just in the way, and to and then forever Stanky said like I had I grew up like idolizing that guy, and I lost all respect for him on that in wow. that moment. So. Okay. No one really knows exactly what happened here, but it, he really did get a seven-inch cut in his leg from getting spiked. When uh, when you were talking about the Pee Wee Reese part uh, where he put his arms around him, yeah, um, did you mention the the joke about the Civil War? Oh no! <laughs> He's like, if the cornfields yeah. had just held out, we would have won that thing. Jackie's like. Yeah, well, maybe next time. He doesn't. Re- <laughs> he doesn't realize he's joking at first. But and Reese then, does say, "There ain't gonna be a next time." There isn't there another line he says about like maybe we'll just all wear forty two and then no one will know who to boo. Yeah. Oh yeah, he Which said. I think it's supposed to be like a play on the fact that everybody wears forty two something. But yeah. also, it's a uh, he said the somebody way he says else it, actually said it though. Maybe we'll oh, really? all wear yeah. forty two so they won't be able to tell us apart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, but it wasn't. It wasn't Reese in real life. I think it was. Uh, it was somebody else. Um, so he's laid up getting fixed up after getting spiked. Branch comes in to talk to him and he says, I got to tell you, Jackie, on the way to the game today, I saw a white boy pretending to be Jackie Robinson. Imagine that a young white boy pretending to be a black man playing baseball. It was, um, uh, Gene Hermansky in 51 and said the next, next year we'll all wear 42. Wow. Mm-hmm. That's cool. Uh, Jackie basically says to Branch again, like, why did you bring me in here for real this time? And he tells him a story about having a black teammate in college and not helping him, seeing him have trouble with things and not doing anything to help him or not doing enough. Yeah, he's like, he was a good player and a nice man. Yeah. And I did not help him. And he says, I saw a real problem in baseball, and I decided I needed to fix it. And then he says, you helped me to love baseball again, Jackie. That's why I did this. Yeah, good Um, moment. But I also think it was money. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So we learn now, we get another recap of the season from Harold. Uh, we skip to the end. Dodgers are going for a pennant. They've been on a hot streak. They just got to win a little bit here, and they'll be heading to the World Series. 
Because at this point, the pennant meant yeah. you were the best team in the league, and you automatically just – there was no playoff except for the World Series. If you were the best in the American League, you played the best in the National League. When did that change? Like, I don't remember when it started. It was when they added more teams uh, yeah, and more divisions, but I don't mm-hmm. honestly know when that was. Because, I mean, Angels in the outfield, which hopefully someday we'll be able to oh. do – but it's not on streaming services. Ah, oh. um, no. They mentioned it's not on Disney. It's not Disney owns the rights, and it's not on Disney Plus. Weird. Yeah, that is weird. Uh, it's something about yeah, something weird with the rights to that movie. But anyways, the thing ab- about that movie is like the angels need to win the pennant, and that's why he's wishing for angels. Yeah. To help th- the team. But I was curious if like the pennant meant the same thing in that movie as it does. Well, the pennant is the best team in the league. Yeah. But now you can not win the pennant and still win the, go to go World to Series the World or whatever. Series. Yeah. But okay. The, but yeah. So when they added that, exactly, I'm not sure. Uh, when they started actually doing playoffs. Uh, so we get one more game against Pittsburgh, of course, for the NL pennant. Oster Mueller's on the mound for Pittsburgh again. Still wildly racist. Uh, he's not pitching to Robinson, so Jackie basically says, why don't you give me something to hit? And he's like, oh, all right, you asked for it. Throws him one over, and Jackie hammers a home run. And it more or less wins the pennant for the team. Yep. And then we get one more shot of Higby now in the Pittsburgh dugout watching this happen, and he's like, I'm in Pittsburgh. <laughs> Still mad about it. Still in Pittsburgh. What the shit? <laughs> and we close out the movie with just a really quick recap. Mm. Uh, Brent Rickey is a Hall of Fame, is in the Hall of Fame. Pee Wee Reese is in the Hall of Fame. Eddie Stanky, we learned, went on to be a longtime manager. Ralph Branca, that was the the tall guy we were talking about. Yeah. Uh, he was a three-time All-Star. Ben Chapman, Alan Tudyk's racist character we find out was fired the following year and never managed again and then Dix uh, Dixie the other uh, leader of the racist group here uh, was traded the following year also to Pittsburgh wow Ed Charles the kid that we kept seeing pop up for no real reason seemingly yeah it seemed like he was going to be important he ended up being in real life played in the majors Uh, we learned that Rachel started the Jackie Robinson Foundation to provide college scholarships, which is still a big thing, obviously. Uh, Jackie Robinson won the Rookie of the Year that year. He went on to win the World Series in 1955 over the Yankees, of course. Uh, He is in the Hall of Fame, and there's a Jackie Robinson Day in the majors uh, where everyone wears the number 42. It's the only number that remains retired across all of Major League Baseball. Mm Mm-hmm. I remember that jerk in New York wouldn't give up the number and continued to wearing it. For oh, years. that was an exemption. Come on. It was an exemption because he was yep. grandfathered in, but just give up the number, jerk. And Rivera wouldn't do it. What a real piece of garbage. <laughs> the point it. of this movie Stop it. is Mariano Rivera's garbage. Oh, that's what your plan was to do this? Here's a, here's a fun cameo. Kelly, we'll say Jackal, uh, the babysitter, for oh yeah, and that yep. one yeah. little. She note. is Branch Ricky's great granddaughter. Oh, that's oh, cool. That's yeah. cool. Interesting. Yeah, I wondered why all of a sudden there was just a scene where a babysitter was coming to, so that Jackie could go to your Jackie's wife. Could yeah, go why to the is game. that happening? But that, all right, that's cool. Uh, he's like one of those guys that you never like. You know all this stuff about, but you really can't. There's no like footage. Yeah. There's not a lot of footage. There is, but yeah, there's not a there's lot of footage. There's some. And it's like another a person I never heard speak. That's another thing. Like Yeah. Like you hear all these stories about him, but you never really see. he died in what, seventy one or something. He died a early. A while ago, yeah. He died early. He had diabetes or something and he was he he went blind. There was he had like a lot of health problems. But I like at some point I forget what documentary I had seen. It might have been Ken Burns. I can't Ken remember. Burns does a good job with this. But there's a piece where he's you see him like I forget even what it is. He's speaking at something, mm-hmm. and like I've never even heard his voice. It's so weird. Like, yeah. wow, I never even heard his voice. And now, like, obviously there are records of that, but 
It's not something that you. Yeah, now, you don't see him as much because, like you said, he wasn't. He around died. Yeah, he, he just wasn't, he wasn't around a lot. He, he didn't get to see the old timer Jackie Robinson. Right. Um, which is crazy, but also like another thing I found, which is pretty cool on YouTube, you can find. Uh, old broadcasts and you can find some of his games like the old brooklyn games that's cool on youtube like full radio broadcasts of old games which is really cool nice we talk i think we talked about this before we started recording but we don't see here because it's just his first year is there was a time where he he and ricky basically decided now that you're famous now that people know who you are and know your story you don't have to turn the other cheek every time yeah yeah like still obviously you got to be careful don't start trouble right but like, feel free to speak your mind now. And so he did, and that's when he started to become an activist as much yeah. as a baseball player. Right. Interesting. Very interesting. Good movie. Chadwick Boseman also sad to not Fantastic. have him anymore. He's great. Yeah. So yeah. good. Sad. sad not to have him anymore. But yeah. man, he was good in this. He's so good. So good in this. And there were lots of cameos. Lot, not can, not even cameos. Just a lot of people in like... like yeah. Everybody's a person. Yeah. Like... All right, uh, is there a quote for Quote Mountain? I mean, to me, it's I assume maybe... I going to go with Alan Tudyk's. Give me a number yeah. and I'll get the guts. I'll give you the guts. That was my favorite. That's good. That's uh, good maybe tomorrow we're all, we'll all wear for Yeah, that one's somebody. good, too. Because that's, like, that's the one they show in the... In the trailer? Yeah. yeah. Um, another one that I liked, where'd it go? Branch Rickey, we had a victory of fascism in Germany. It's time time we had a victory over racism at home. I like that one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. His name was Wendell Smith, not Howard. The reporter. Hmm. I think I had him as Harold on the list. Or Harold, yeah. I was like, I that doesn't sound right. <laughs> Harold Parrot? Yeah. I don't know where I got that name from. You're com- you're combining two characters. There's a oh, Harold Parrot and there's a Wendell Smith. Who's Harold Parrot? Who's Harold Parrot? Here, Harold Parrot is the um, he's the assistant that's on the bus that yells at everyone who first <laughs> oh, yeah. doesn't agree. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> he's the one who first doesn't agree, and then like at some point, Jackie gets uh, oh, he gets berated by the Phillies manager. He's like, yeah. what the fuck? And uh, <laughs> and Han Solo goes. You were against this. You remember that? Yeah. Yeah. So yes, Wendell Smith is the actual sports writer. I don't know why. Okay. Wendell Smith. I clearly wrote down the wrong name here, but yes. That actor was good. Andre Holland, he was good too. Uh okay, so is it uh we're all wear forty two? I like that. I'm good with that. Is that the quote mountain? Or do you have a better quote mountain? No, that's not me. <laughs> I right. got traded to Pittsburgh. That's yeah, fun. That <laughs> That one's also fun. Uh, All right. So, uh, yeah, we're going MVP with... has to be Chadwick Boseman. Oh, for sure. Think? Without a doubt. Yeah. I'm relieved. I really thought you guys were going to team up on me and both say Alan Tudyk. Oh, stop it. <laughs> Get out of here. You're the worst. All right, final verdict. This is going to be interesting because it's pretty good. It is pretty good. But how good is it? Indeed, how good is it? How good is it? I'm going with 7.7. <sighs> I'm going with 7.3. I'm going 7.5. Well, look at that. There you go, Wally. Do that math. So, it puts math is it, math is easy. Yes, it, is. it puts it hard. even. It put it even with something. Put it even with uh, Happy Gilmore, and white. <laughs> well, that's real silly. And white man can't jump. Okay, it's interesting. I it's weird to make those comparisons, but I don't know that it's the wrong. It is one point or point one under Cool Runnings. Interesting. Point yeah, one we, we under really Cool Runnings. To, like we need to go. Cool know Runnings was wrong, though. Cool Runnings was really wrong. good. This is a better story, but as yeah, a movie, it's, yes, yes. But Cool Runnings is a great movie, a like great way movie. better than we thought. Cool Runnings, real good. Again, I think we might have to flex the numbers, but I think most of our. I think most of them are in the right order or oh, close yeah. to it. There might be like Mr. Baseball should at least be a 9.0. It should be higher. Oh, obviously. my God. Garbage movie. Great movie. Uh, you guys Have you worse. never seen You're his mustache before? <laughs> the Have you guy. never seen his mustache? Uh, uh, all right. So scared. this is a high-ranking movie, but it's not um, all the way up there. I would say with, at a cursory glance, probably middle of the pack. 
Oh, it's a middle of the pack. Interesting. Interesting. All right. All right. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll run it through. Cool one. Runnings was high, I thought, at one point. Cool Runnings was high. Two, three. Okay, maybe I was overestimating. It's got to be in the top 15, Six. I would think. I would think so. Seven, eight, nine. Math is easy. We're looking at, yeah, top 15. Okay. Yeah, it's a good movie. Good movie. It's um, how rewatchable is it? I guess. I guess it's kind of rewatchable. It's kind of fun, uplifting and fun. Yeah, yeah. like uh, I don't think I'd ever sit down to watch it. But if it was yeah. on, I would yeah. get drawn into it. Right. Yeah. yeah. Or like if it's been a couple years, you could you could yeah you could revisit it, it later ooh. on. Because Levis get he gets ooh butt to the face butt to the face that did not happen in the movie butt to the face. Uh, uh, all right. Would you like Giants anything taken out? It's my it's my turn. Yes. I think I'm gonna break the uh, tradition okay. here, yeah, because I had so much trouble finding a correct movie, and this just popped up, I believe, on on Max. I'm just gonna say I spun the wheel. If you wanted a football movie, that's, that's what it would, that's what it is. It's okay, a football movie, that. so that works out. Perfect. The movie is sketchy. the movie is how is that sketchy? What that did I telepathically good. send that to him? I don't know. It says football on the phone. Uh-huh. All right, the movie is Necessary Roughness, 1991 classic. If you haven't seen it, Billy, I think you might enjoy this. Due to NCAA sanctions, Texas State's fighting armadillos must form a football team just from their actual student body, not scholarships, to play their football schedule. Now, this has Scott Bakula in it as the main character. Is that a name I know? It That's, has. That is a name I know. Sinbad <laughs> in it. Okay. Did it, it did has, you know, or is that just something the internet says? It has something? Rob Schneider oh, in Scott it. Oh, Scott Bakula. Okay. It has Jason Bateman. Rob ba- Schneider? Yep. Is Jason, he in love with a stapler? He might be. Jason <laughs> no, no. Bateman. Rob Schneider is a stapler. <laughs> Rob Schneider is a stapler. <laughs> Kathy Ireland is in this movie. I used to be into her. Yeah. Uh, and then the most important thing about this Scott movie. Scott Bakula is Quantum Leap? Yes. That's who it is. You know okay. who Bakula is? He's Major League Three. Yeah. That's Bacula. Yeah, it's in other stuff. But Major League, Th- yeah, yes. Major League Three is the main thing you would know him from. But most importantly, the coach of the Fighting Armadillos is... It looks like... Uh, Robert Loja. Oh, my. Is it really? <laughs> Can you say the thing? You need to say the thing. <laughs> my name is Robert Loja. R, as in Robert Loja. O, as in... Oh, my God, it's Robert Loja. <laughs> <laughs> B, as in... <laughs> Boy, that's Robert Loja. <laughs> Robert Loja. Bacula is the guy. He's Bacula's, not a coach. He's the guy. No, he's the guy. He's young enough for the guy. Robert Loja's he doesn't in this. Quite look Vander like a Holyfield. college player in this. We got Vander some Holyfields in this. We got some winners in this. This is a movie I can't remember if I unsuccessfully tried to rent or successfully rented. There were several. Uh, Rated our movies back in the day when I uh, lived next to a corner store. I would get out sometimes. Get you know people wouldn't couldn't catch it as a kid. Did you? And I can't remember if this is the one that I that I did or if it, oh, it's Bateman's a different one. This. I can't remember if yeah, it's that's, Wildcats that's the only or this bad movie. Thing about this movie is Jason Bateman's in it. Oh, stop it! Jason Bateman's uh, great. Did you see yeah, what Robert Loja's name in the movie is? I didn't. I just closed my laptop, so now uh, you yeah, got to tell me. Yeah, Robert it's Loja. Coach Wally, Wally Rig. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Got Dick 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 Butkus. All right. Good. All right. We just lost Marcus it. Marcus Giamatti. Jerry Rice. Who's Marcus Giamatti. Jerry. And Jim Kelly. We got some good people in this movie. It's Herschel gonna be Walker. Good. Wait, wait. Why are they saying convict football? Are you looking up the right movie? Yeah. Necessary roughness. Yeah, because it's got Robert Loja and Scott Bakula in it. I don't know. Maybe I haven't seen it. Chris Berman's in it. Back, 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 yeah, back, back. Yeah, I've definitely not ever seen this movie. All right, this is our last movie before the Christmas break, though. So, uh, yeah, oh, it is. I think we have two weeks off. Yeah, because right? Christmas, Christmas and is New Year's. on a Monday. It's Christmas on a Monday, New Year's on a Monday. Yeah. So, yeah. two week break after necessary roughness. So, are we gonna uh, do? And then we got to do our re rank at some point. Are we gonna do our normal uh, uh, New Year's celebration thing that we? We've oh, you want to bring that back? That's like three years old. That is not really. We missed it. We missed it. 
a couple times. We didn't we? do it this past year, obviously. Yeah, I think we've, we've missed it a couple of years now. Huh. I don't know. Haven't we? <laughs> the award show? Yeah, the award be great. show. That's what I was trying to go with. That, but we have to re-rank. So is that an award show? or We're going to do an award show and then a re-rank? We we'll just, we'll think about yeah, it. We'll, we'll think about it. we got two weeks to think about it. Three weeks to Who think about it. this other woman here? Harley, Harley Jean Kozak? Good question. I don't know. We'll find out next week. Find out. All right. That's it. We're out of here. Give me the thing. You gotta say peace out. Peace, peace out. Give me the thing. Ding, ding. Robert Lozier. <laughs>